So in this tutorial, we're going to be creating a cropper. And as you can see, it's fully functional. I can translate it left, right, up and down, and I can even modify the magnification. And then from there, you can do whatever you'd like with a new UI image. So we're going to build this tutorial by going back and forth between my sample app, and we're going to essentially copy paste code over and discuss it before we move on. Um, and essentially what we're going for here is it ends up being pretty mathematically complex and trying to account for everything. So instead of trying to recreate it, and it took a long time to create the first time, so I'll put the sample code in the description. But if you're trying to understand how it works so that you can build on it and manipulate it later, uh, you should probably listen to the end of the video. So we'll go ahead and get started by creating a new project. So I'm going to create, I'm going to call it a code tutorial image cropper. Okay. Put it on my desktop. Okay. And ever since Xcode 12, there's some extra junk that we're going to be getting rid of. We don't need a lot of these things like the environment portion and the fetch request. We also don't need any of the stuff inside of the body. And we will not be using any of these functions either. Or the item formatter out here. So the next thing we're going to do is we just need to put something in here so it doesn't get upset. I'm just going to put the letter A inside of a text field. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a second file. So you'll know which one we're on, which project we're on, because the old one says rough cropping view, and the new one says code tutorial underscore image cropper. So when I go back and forth, that's how you can keep track. So I'm going to create a new file here called image cropping view. Okay, image cropping view. And I'm going to put that right inside. And Let's look at everything inside of here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to have universal safe offsets and I'm going to copy that over. So essentially I'm taking, if you have any sort of iPhone that has um, essentially no, no button at the home button and it has the bevels then you need to know the, the safe areas. That's essentially what prevents you from going underneath that little cutout or the notch. So I will always reference that as universal safe offsets because I've set that right there. So now let's look inside of image cropping view. So this is essentially the bulk of the brain. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some of these auxiliary functions first. So at the bottom, I create a function called get dimension. And I'm going to go ahead and put that. I'm going to get rid of the preview, by the way. And I'm going to add this function, get dimension. Really simple function. All it's doing is it's taking a width and a height, any two CG flows that you're inserting. It's going to compare them, and it's going to return the larger one. And essentially, that's going to help us scale things properly on the screen. So you'll see where we use it over and over and over. So the function is called get dimension. It takes two values and returns the larger of the two. That's really what it does. And then the next function is we're going to copy over is, well, first, let's go over here and say we're going to end up actually t coding out two separate views here. So one of the views is going to be called struct viewfinder. Okay. So I'm going to add that right in between here, struct viewfinder. And anytime I'm coding a view, I need to also have this body. So that's why I'm getting that error. Error, it says I'm not conforming. OK, and I need to put something inside of there. So I'm, for now, I'm just going to put text B. OK. So inside of this function, we have a few things. First, I'm going to fold the code so that way we can get a feel for it. So the variables inside of the viewfinder view, we have a few of them. I'm going to copy them over and we'll discuss them. So we have image width, which is a bound variable, meaning that'll be changed by its parent. And in every, any changes we make to it will change its parent as well. So image width, image height. We have essentially the center of the image, where it's located. We have what we call active offset and final offset, active magnification and final magnification. and Let's just talk about those for a second. So magnification and offset are what they sound like. You know, it has to do with essentially, if we look at the preview, this is the magnification. 
So here we are at one magnif magnification. This is roughly two. And this would be rough. Well, it doesn't go past four, so that would have to be four. Okay. And the offset is in these dimensions. Okay. And so the biggest thing to know about is that when we when we look at that, what's the difference between active and final? Well, we're using final magnification purely for for the sake of a starting point when we start a second drag or second magnification is purely for calculations whereas active offset is what we're going to use to actually modify uh, the views okay so our UI is updated via active offset but all calculations are made via final offset and you'll understand what I mean when we get there then we have dot size and that is literally just referring to this over here we have dot color that's same principle it's just referring to the what's behind here and we have surrounding color and right now these colors are all different colors purely for the sake of demonstration but they'll all be black and that kind of gives you the spotlight feel okay and that's all those variables and now for some of the functions that go into this so we'll go back to image cropping view we have two more functions we need to add we have get surrounding view offsets and what that is doing is if you look here these are technically four different rectangles when I go like this. These are three different rectangles and technically there's the fourth, right? And these have no knowledge of how to stick to the edges of our viewfinder. What it's doing is it creates a rectangle and they're purely being offset to the left and to the right. So this function that we're going to be adding, this get surrounding view offsets, essentially I'm going to be figuring out the offset that we need uh, in either dimension. So it takes in whether or not we're moving horizontally or vertically and then it also this left or up essentially is determining if we're the left view or the upper view then this will end up being true and it'll be false otherwise and that has to do mainly with the fact that when you're translating in in these dimensions I go like this moving to the right and moving down are technically positive offsets and moving to the left and moving up are technically negative off offsets. So that's why to essentially make everything really concise I created one function and the math is identical except for the fact that we have changing signs. So essentially negative one that's toggling between either negative one or positive one and that affects our offset. So initial offset Essentially, what we're trying to figure out is the initial offset is going to be based off of whether or not we're moving horizontally or vertically. And if we're moving horizontally, well, the initial offset will be the image width. Otherwise, it'll be the image height. Negval is essentially saying, hey, if we're moving left, if we're on the left view or the upper view, then we are going to be, our negval is going to be negative 1. And we have a multiplier of negative 1. Otherwise, we, we have a multiplier of positive 1. And then uh, this compensator here essentially is saying, that let's go right here. Essentially, it's accounting for any offsets we would have done before running through that function in the current state. So that's essentially saying, taking into account that we've already technically offset it to the left a certain amount, and now we've technically offset it upper a certain amount, and that's how we factor our previous moves into the calculation. So that's what this area is, and then there's just a really long calculation, which at the end of the day is just trying to account for the fact that we are going to end up having to essentially we have to or when we um, I guess the, what I'm trying to say is at the end of the day when we're trying to calculate what the final image should look like we have to account for the fact that CI image is operating from the top left corner whereas meaning that when we end up calculating our image our new cropped image it's always going to be calculating from here downwards so we need to offset it accordingly and additionally this technically every view in Swift UI in, in the current form, the way this is written, is starts and understands its origin from the center, not from the top left corner. And that's why we have to do these kinds of calculations. So that's what get surrounding view offsets is. And the next one is get magnification. And the way get magnification is working, it's written so that it'll take one second here to refresh. There we go. It's written so that it's calculating the furthest you've dragged either to the right or down and it's taking the larger of the two and using that as our intended magnification so if I move all the way to the right but I haven't moved down or if I do the opposite it thinks I'm trying to do an equal magnification or I can just go diagonally in which case this this uh, top left corner button moves with my cursor 
okay? So that's what that function is doing. You can kind of go through the math to get a feel for that, but it's really quite simple. So I'm going to copy all those functions over. Okay. Image cropping view. Oh, sorry. It's right here inside. And that's inside of the viewfinder view. Okay. So now let's look inside the actual viewfinder view. So it's made up of a few different parts. So I'm going to grab them up into groups like that. And so here's the first thing. These first group of views are going to be the views for the surrounding rectangle. So I'm going to copy them in and we can talk about each piece. So we have the rectangle to the, uh, let's see, if it's going to be easiest if we just kind of go back and forth between. So the, the one on the left is red, the one on the right is blue, and the one on the top is yellow, and the one on the bottom is green. Okay, so this one right here, you can tell which one I'm working on because it says red, blue, yellow, or green. So if you're paying close attention, you but attention, you'll notice that on each of those rectangles, you have you know the red, the blue, the yellow, and the green. But you also have a foreground color of surrounding color. That's because the finished product will have the surrounding color as the color of those rectangles, whereas these funky colors are just for the sake of you know demoing and us knowing where things are. So the next thing you want to do is go ahead and fold up that group, okay? And we're going to embed the entire thing in the Z stack so we can start stacking items on top of each other. So underneath that, you're going to want to go back to the code that we were working on, and we're going to copy the next piece over. And the next piece will be this rectangle. So I'm going to copy that over. Uh, so you'll notice that this rectangle is on the same level as that group that had all the rectangles inside of it. And all this rectangle technically is, it's a square, because you can see that we have get dimensions times active magnification on both sides here. And then we also have a foreground color of a white, but it has an opacity of essentially 0 0.05. So it is 5% opaque. Essentially, it is not opaque at all. You can hardly even see it. And you would almost guess that it was translucent. Now, I could have just made it clear if I wanted it to be clear. But the problem is at a certain level of opacity, you can't interact with it. So let's go over here to the canvas of the finished product. And if I run this canvas, so play it you'll notice that I can go here and drag. So if I want to drag this thing around, I'm actually technically clicking on that 0 0.05 opaque white rectangle that spans this view, okay? And if this was clear, it wouldn't let me interact with it. It thinks I'm clicking through it to whatever's behind it. So by making it a very, very transparent white or translucent white, it allows me to interact with it and the user doesn't even realize that there's something there, okay? And in addition, when the surrounding views are going to be black, these color views when they become black, it almost accentuates uh, your selection. So it's, it's really not that big of a deal and it looks good. So I'm going to go over back to the image cropping view. That's what that is. You'll notice that it has the foreground color, it has offsets equal to the active offset. Because remember, active offset is actually modifying our user interface. But for the first time, we'll see what the point of final offset is. And you'll notice that in the drag gesture that allows me to go ahead, so we have a drag gesture, gesture that is, I'm gonna go ahead and we copy that over. Let's go to image cropping view. We already copied it over, so I'm gonna be talking uh, about this code inside of the code tutorial, and then I'm going to be looking at the canvas over here, okay? So you'll notice that in the drag gesture, we have unchanged, drag in, and essentially with the first piece here, so we're creating an instance of the final offset plus the change made via dragging, and we're calling it the working offset. So the whole point is that we're taking the final offset, which was the last acceptable offset that was used, and we are creating an instance of it, plus the proposed drag that is done inside this gesture, okay? We're not actually setting it to active. When the active uh, offset accepts these values, then the user interface will change. Okay, but it must get through all of this before you finally see self active offset equals whatever. So this is changing the user interface, whereas working offset and final offset are working calculations. So we have let working offset equal CG size. And we have essentially, like I said, the final offset plus the width of the translation, final offset height plus the height of the translation. This is just for debugging purposes. Then as you can see, the first thing we're doing is we're checking if we're within the right and left bounds when translating in the horizontal direction. So what does that mean? That means that, let's go here and let's just go all the way to the edge here, okay? 
you see how I can't go past that? That's it. Same principle. I can't go past this. So what I'm saying is this is a conditional that's calculating that. Okay, you can go through and try to do the math yourself, but it, it just would make this video too long. So I'm, I'm telling you what's happening instead. So it's saying as long as we're within those bounds, you can set the active offset equal to the working offset for the weight at least. Okay, and then it's saying, hey, if you're too far over to the right, then just set the offset equal to the very edge. And if you're too far over to the left, do the same thing. Okay, and that's that. And then the next thing is says check if we're able to do the same thing up and down, right? So it's essentially just the same exact premise. And the whole point here is to point out that we're not saying that you have to satisfy both to modify both the width and the height. They're almost calculated separately. And you get this working offset modifying active offset. So you see how final offset here is just being used for calculation purposes to create working offset. And if conditions are met, then active offset is set equal to working offset. It's quite, it's just really, it's really that simple. And then you'll see that once we have finished dragging and we've run through this a bajillion times as you're kind of going back and forth, when you release, it sets the final offset equal to the active offset. Or not even just, well, actually, yeah, when you, that's exactly right. So on ended, it's setting it equal to the final offset, equal to the active offset so that when you start dragging it again, it's ready to go to start these whole set of calculations all over again. Okay, so that relationship between final and active offset, you'll see that again when we work with magnification. So let's go on to the next piece that we need to copy over. So that covers this. Now moving on, we have the next rectangle. On. These views create the white grid. It's, it's really quite simple. So if we go back to the canvas, I'm oh, sorry, we'll go back to the canvas here. This is the finished version. Essentially, it's one square, okay? And then you have one mini square right here, a rectangle, I should say, and one rectangle right here. Instead of taking the time to create a line and line and line and line, two rectangles are as, they're fine because you get the overlap of the lines right here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and add that code over. So all that is is from here up to here. So I'll copy that over, image cropping view, and that just goes right below right there. Okay. And then let's look at the next piece. We have the upper left corner icon. Okay, I'm going to fold that up, and there is a gesture in there that we'll discuss. That's pretty much the last piece we're, we're looking for here. Okay. So inside the stack, at least. So that is the... I'm going to save it. I'm going to go back to our canvas for the finished product. That is this icon right here and the magnification function. Now, this honestly was the most complex part of the entire process. So I used one of the SF symbols to get that icon. I kind of did some formatting for myself, things that I liked. And you can imagine that essentially I set this offset to equal the top left corner. So I, it's, it's matching both the size of the grid and it's just going to the left-hand side and then up to the, to, the, so to the left and to the up. So that's how you get that in its proper positioning. And order does matter. It is very crucial that you have essentially the frame and the offset, and then you have the gesture at the end. That, that's very crucial, okay? Uh, it's, it's also crucial, especially when you do buttons, because sometimes Xcode gets confused between where you're supposed to click and offsetting a button so that the visual region is not equal to its clickable region.